Anyone want to share anything that's on their heart? Anyone? <coughs> Who of you are petrified about this coronavirus? Okay, good, 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 good. Who of you are still going to America? <laughs> oh dear. Those of you that don't know, America's closed down their borders to all Europeans and Irish citizens may not come into their country. Uh, Ireland may not come. There's a travel ban for two weeks. No, no one from Europe. Nothing. The <coughs> it's just because they can't cope with the pandemic. They don't have the resources, they don't have manpower, and they don't have the equipment to deal with it. So yeah, we have to pray and pr ask God's protection, especially in, South in Africa. But I, th I think the most important thing is to just be wise in this time. Don't be unwise. Keep yourself healthy. Make sure you don't get flu, especially the old folks, because the older you are, the more susceptible you are. Be just because your immune system is not as strong to fight it, that's all. Anyone else? My wife is more apt to speak on it. She's, she's had a sore throat for weeks and, and got a bit of snivel, so she, she's not coming. So I said, come on, man. No, 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 she's not putting all those old people at risk. No, she's just like that. She's overcautious. She's always been like that. No, okay, I submit. Okay, we're on the, the fourth of our series. We're looking at the elementary principles of Christian faith. There's one that's gone on YouTube online. There's two still hanging. There's a picture that is a problem, Barry said, so we'll probably get it up and running on Tuesday, so forgive us for that. Um, but we're having a look at the scripture, Hebrews 6, verse 1 to 3, and I've, I've mentioned that we're going through the elementary foundational foundations or principles or doctrines of the Christian faith because there's such immaturity in the church. And we need to make sure that our foundation is secure so that we're not wobbly. Amen? And here, it, here we're reading from Hebrews 6, verse 1 to 3, and it reads as follows. This is our scripture verse for this next six weeks. Therefore, let us leave, let go of, and carry on, Okay. The elementary, the basic, the foundational ABC teachings about Christ and go on to maturity or purity or Christ-likeness, okay? Not laying again the foundation of repentance for the acts that lead to death and faith in God, instructions about baptisms and la the laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead and eternal judgment and God permitting, we will do so. Now here we have the six foundational principles that he puts here. And he says, after that, he said, let's get these behind us, get them under our belt so that we know the ABCs of the Christian faith, the doctrines, the principles, that they're solid. And then let's go on. And it says, and it's a key verse there, it says, and God permitting, we will do so. And I honestly, honestly believe that God does not permit most believers to go on because they don't have these under their belt. But I think once we know the truth and we apply it, he will allow us to carry on. If you know this truth and you do not apply it, you will not go on. You will stagnate in your walk with God. 100% I guarantee you. Because God will not permit you to go on. And I do not want to stay stagnant as an infant in Christ. I want to go on into maturity. Amen? That Though by this time you ought to be teachers, you're still infants, I don't want that said of us. I want us to be able to be teachers of the Word of God and in a sense multiply ourselves, reproduce of our kind. In other words, lead others to the Lord. So the first one was repentance from acts that lead to death. What is that? Believing that we th repent that we think that we can do good things to in in inherit salvation. None of our good works will get us to heaven. Amen? They are like a filthy, dirty menstrual rag before God, okay? If, if it's done with thinking that I can earn salvation through it. However, we call to do good works. But our motive is because we love God, not for salvation. Number two is faith in God, trusting Him implicitly. If He says it, that settles it. I don't question it. 
Baptisms, we had a look at baptisms last week. How many baptisms are there? Seven. How many are applicable to us? Four. four. Three. Four. Yeah. Go have a listen why. Okay. That's my take on baptisms. You go and you can discuss it with me. I don't have a problem with that. And then number four, the laying on of hands is what we will look to today. And then number five, the resurrection of the dead. And lastly, eternal judgment, which we will look at in two weeks from now. So we're looking at the laying of, of, of hands. And um, who of you have heard a teaching ever on the laying of, of hands? One person? Three people? In a congregation or online? <coughs> okay, then tell me, what is, it, what is the importance? Why is that a foundational doctrine? What's the importance? What happens when you lay hands? Why? Why do we do it? Come on. Sorry? For the sick to be healed. One. Good. Very good. Jesus did it. So we're supposed to. Okay, great. What else? It's, an, it's a form of impartation or transfer into another person's life, right? Okay. That is the importance of laying of, of hands. When I lay hands on someone, I'm imparting or I'm transferring something from myself to them. Okay? So we're going to not be unstable in our foundation. We're going to be solidly secure in our walk with God. So let's have a look. We're going to look at some Old Testament. I'm going to read a lot of scripture. We're going to look at some Old Testament texts and see that it comes through the Old Testament right through into the New Testament, and it becomes a foundational faith that we are to actually apply and use in our own lives. So let's have a look at some scriptures. I'm going to hit a whole stack. Are you ready? Genesis 48 verse 14. But as I reached out his right hand, I mean, sorry, Israel reached out his right hand and put it on Ephraim's head. Though he was the younger and crossed his arm and put his left hand on Manasseh's head, even though Manasseh was the firstborn. I'm, I, I need to be careful of getting, going off track in this. Here he puts his, which hand? He first puts his right hand on the younger and then he puts his left hand on the, which is wrong. Why? Because, forgive me if you're left-handed, there's no slight on you. It's just the right hand was always seen as the hand of? Of? Dominance, of authority, yeah? That's why you, Jesus sits at the right hand of the Father. But here what he does is he does it, in a, he does it incorrectly, actually. However he intended to do it. Okay? The, the blessing was always supposed to go to the? Elder, not the younger. Okay, but let's not get distracted. Yeah, it's a whole. That's a whole teaching on its own. But here, what happens is he places hands, and what does he do? What hap What is transferred through this? A blessing. What else is transferred here? Sorry. Okay. Authority, blessing, and inheritance is transferred. And that is why he prays and he pr prays a blessing over his, over his child. He should have been play, praying a blessing over his firstborn, but he does it to both, but he does it in the wrong order, but that's a whole teaching in itself. Numbers 27, verse 18 to 20, it says, So the Lord said to Moses, Take Joshua, son of Nun, a man in whom the Spirit is the Spirit, and lay hands on him. Okay, God said you are to do this. Have him stand before Eliezer the priest, and the entire assembly, the whole, all of Israel, in other words, before the whole church, okay? And commission him in their presence. What does commission mean? Giving him a job, him a job send him off, right? Give him a, a, an office. And then it says, give him some of your authority so that the whole that the whole Israelite community will obey him. And here, Joshua is commissioned by Moses and he lays hands on, on Joshua and he prays for him in front of everyone. And he says, I bless you with the authority from on high. 
and he transfers, in a sense, authority and leadership and honor in front of everyone. Okay? We read in Deuteronomy 34, verse 9. Then Joshua, son of Nun, and wisdom, by the way. Now, Joshua, son of Nun, was filled with the spirit of wisdom because Moses had laid his hands on him. So the Israelite listened to him and did what the Lord had commanded him. Do you see that wisdom was transferred? What else was transferred? Authority, leadership, honor, respect, etc., etc., etc. Okay? So there's not just one thing. Here he transfers authority to another man of God that the Spirit was upon. Okay? So the, the laying on of hands is an ancient practice and should still be taking place today. Now, he has another one. Listen to this. In Leviticus 16, verse 21, he is to lay both hands, not one hand, both hands, okay, what does that symbolize? Everything, okay? Both ha hands on the head of the live goat and confess over it all the wickedness and rebellion of the Israelites, all their sins, and put, uh, put them on the goat's head. He shall send the goat away into the desert in the care of a man appointed for the task. The goat will carry on on itself all the sins to a solitary place and the man shall release it in the desert and tell me what happened with that goat then it would die and what would happen with the sins they would die with it that's why God will remember your sins no more when you can and he removes it as far as the east is from the so does he remove our transgressions from us when we repent from a genuine and pure, pure and sincere heart. But here in the Old Testament, God says, I want you to place both hands on this animal, transfer all your sins and the people's sins onto the, and he becomes the, yeah, the escape goat. And that is, and it's a shadow of that which was to come in Christ Jesus. Beautiful, beautiful. You can also read then Leviticus 1 verse 3 actually before that it says he is to lay his hands on the head of the burnt offering and it will be accepted on his behalf to, t to make atonement for him. And that is why we have uh, eternal atonement that comes through Jesus Christ. Amen? What a blessing that we don't have to do. Imagine we had to still do that every day. Hey? Wow. Praise God that we don't have to. Numbers 8, verse 10 to 11. You are to bring the Lev Levites before the Lord, and the Israelites are to lay their hands on them. Aaron is to present the Levites before the Lord as a wave offering from, uh, from the Israelites so that they may be ready to do the work of the Lord. A wave offering is basically saying that they are now the property of God. They no longer belong to themselves. They are God's property. And here they place their hands on the Levites and they say, from now on you belong to the Lord and we commission you into God's work. Crucial, eh? So here, here's some of the things that I think that uh, why we do the laying on of hands, why it's important, and I put them on screen there to transfer inheritance. I have told my dad, lay your hands on me and pray. This was... When he had his stroke, I said, no, oh, now you better pray for me. And I said, come, pray for me. Okay. Fathers, whoever you have laid hands on your sons and prayed a blessing over them. Hello? You're called to as the father. Transfer, and I want to encourage you, transfer the authority, the blessing, the protection over their lives that God has had over your life. Inheritance, wisdom, authority. We've read a lot of these already through those scriptures. I presume you could see that. Honor, ministry, releasing into ministry. We'll read that a lot in the New Testament. Gifts, power, healing, blessing, leadership, cleansing, ordination or the separation for a specific task or role in the church or in God's kingdom. And then we read in the New Testament receiving 
or the infilling of the Holy Spirit, which we've done. And then I was, while I was just quickly going through it before the service, and I just felt God said, and sin. I'll get to that just now. Okay, unfortunately I have to do that. I just feel I have to. So, most people, I believe, are receivers and not transmitters. And I believe God wants us to be transmitters where we actually are not just always receiving, but we are giving. So I want to hear from you, every single one of you here individually. Are your hands available to be used of God? To transfer his blessing on others, his healing, his spirit. Are your hands available? Do you say, Lord, here I am, use me? Will you do it? Let's have a look at some New Testament uh, scriptures. Here we see Jesus. In, uh, there's a lot of them on healing. I mean, uh, there are so many scriptures with regard to laying on of hands. We cannot get through it in a short sermon. But if you want, go for it and go and uh, study it up. It will be interesting for your sake and you'll grow. Mark 5 verse 23. And, uh, and pleaded earnestly with him. My little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. She says, well, Lord Jesus, please come. Just, just lay your hands and she'll live. In other words, through the, your laying of hands, healing will flow. Luke 4 verse 40. When, when the sun was setting, the people brought to Jesus all who had various kinds of sickness, sicknesses, and he laid, and laying his hands on each of them, he healed them. What took place when he laid his hands on them? Healing took place. We see again in Matthew 8 verse 3. Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said, be cleaned. Immediately he was cured of his leprosy. Immediately. Would others have touched him? Will you touch someone with coronavirus? <laughs> with a broomstick. Wood is not a conductor, man. You need. <laughs> Here he touches someone with what? They were petrified of leprosy. Will you touch someone with coronavirus? Hmm? Okay, good girl. Good answer. Mark 6 verse 5. Great is he that is in me than is he that is in the world. Amen? Amen. Okay, so don't let fear rule you. Let the Spirit of God rule you. Okay, Mark 6 verse 5. He could not do anything, do any miracles there except lay his hands on a few sick people and heal them. And he was, and he was amazed at their lack of faith, their lack of trust and belief. Okay? But did he heal people? Yes. How? Through the laying on of hands. What are other things that take place when you lay hands? Mark 10 verse 13 to 16. People were bringing the little children to Jesus to have him touch them. But the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant. He said to them, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. I tell you the truth, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never in enter it. And he said to the children, sorry, and he took the children in his arms, put his hands on them and blessed them. He took those little snot-nosed kiddies, put them on his lap water and he blessed them. How often do you take your little snot-nosed child, nephew, friend's child, put them on your lap and bless them, pray a blessing over them? Jesus did. I believe we to be con conductors and transmitters of the blessing and the favor and the authority and the kindness of God into other people's lives. Let's have a look at some of the disciples and elders. Here we read in Acts 28 verse 8, it says, His father was sick in bed, suffering from fever and dysentery. Paul went in to see him and after praying, placed his hands on him 
and healed him. That's the New Testament. After Jesus. Do, are we to do that? Acts 8 verse 17 to 19. Then Peter uh, and John placed his hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. And you can carry on reading that. I think we've read so much of this we know it. He placed his hand and they received the Holy Spirit. Okay? So there's blessing, there's healing, there's a transfer of different things that take place. Acts 9 verse 17 to 19. Then, then Ananias went to the house and entered it. Placing his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, something uh, like scales fell from Saul's eye, and he could see again. He got up and was baptized. Which baptism is that? And after that, uh, uh, and after taking food, he re he regained his strength, and then he was off again. And but this time he was used of God, okay, and not used of Satan. One Timothy four verse thirteen to fourteen says, "Do not neg neglect your gift, which was given you through a prophetic message when the body of elders laid their hands on you." When did they receive the gift? When the hands were laid. By who? The elders in the church. Acts 6 verse 5 to 6. This proposal pleased the whole group. They chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit. Also Philip, Procurus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenius, and Nicholas from Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid their hands on them and commissioned them into ministry. Acts 13, 1 to 3. Uh, in the church at Antioch, there were prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon called Niger, Niger, however you want to say it, Lucia and Cyrene, uh, Manian, who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul. While they were worshipping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. So, the laying on of hands is a crucial part of the church. And I don't think we do it enough. Do we do it enough? Do you do it enough? James 5 verse 14 to 15 says, Is any one of you sick? He should call the elders if you are sick. Okay? That's what the Bible says. He should call the elders, not the elders call him. Not the elders call her. Okay? He should call the elders of the church to pray over him and anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise him up. If he has sinned, he will be forgiven. I'm going to get into this a little bit. Let's elaborate a bit. Here it says, if you are sick, it is your responsibility to do what? You are to go to the elders and say, I want you to pray for me, anoint me with oil so that I can be well. It is not the elders or the pastor's role to come to you and say, can I pray for you? Because you know why? It is because of your faith and trust in the fact that God is going to use the leaders of your congregation to touch your life and heal you. And that is the difference. Because otherwise there might be a lack of faith and it just never happens. So I believe that if you are sick, it is your responsibility to go to the elders and say, will you pray for me? I believe that God's going to heal me through your hands. Not because you're the healer. All you are is an instrument. You're a vessel through which God is going to. God works. Is, I don't want to go off track, but I believe that God works with authority. The structures of authority. That's how God works if you study it. And I believe that we should be the ones, if we are sick, to say, hey, will you pray for me? 
Because I believe, I, the sick person, am trusting God to heal me through your hands. As opposed to you coming to me and you have the faith, but I don't have the faith, hence I don't receive it. And so often, Jesus, we read it earlier, he didn't heal many people. Why? Because of their lack of? They did not trust and believe that God could do it. And I think that's a crucial part of the reason we see so few healings in this day and age, because there's not the faith that God will, ta- God will do it. Right, now, let's get on to a sensitive w- scripture. Now, we've read here in the Old Testament that, we to lay on, or that there was a lot of laying on of hands for different reasons, right? Then we see in the New Testament the same, okay? And we to do it, right? Are we to do it? To anyone? Even anyone who asks. Right, let's throw the spanner in the wheel. 1 Timothy 5 verse 22. Do not be hasty in the laying on of hands. Don't be quick to just lay hands on anyone. It says there, and do not share in the sins of others. Keep yourself pure. And did you see that that was one sentence? And do not share in the sins of others. Why does it say that? Don't be, ha- don't be quick, don't be hasty just to go and lay your hands on someone. Of what? Ah. Can you transfer your sin into someone else's life? Uh, You can transfer everything in your life, but you cannot transfer your sin. Now, that's Old Testament. Yes? I wanted to ask you. Yeah. Why? Why must you be careful of letting just any Tom, Dick, and Harry lay their hands on you? Why? What, is, what happens when you pray for someone? There's a transference of what? In other words, what's in them? Mm. It is. Be, I've, I, I have. I, I have. It was very funny. This once is one person. I'm, here's my wife, I'm here, and this guy says, can I pray for you to my wife? And my wife says, no. I said, why? She said, not a chance. <laughs> Just like, if you know my wife, my wife, if she says no, then you must know. <laughs> why? Because she knows that there's a transference. If you're living in sin, and you come and pray over me, and I allow you to. I'm opening myself, right? For a transference of the Spirit in you into my life. If you are in known sin, and I know it, I'll never let you pray over me and lay your hands over me. There's no way. Hello? Hang on, hang on. There's a difference between, like you're saying, we all sin. True. However, when there's an unrepentant, ongoing sin in my life, let's say I'm committing adultery, and I want to come pray over you and your marriage. Do you understand? Do you think they're going to stay married? Do you think that there's not going to be adultery that's going to affect this couple unless they come before God and break that? I, how many times have you seen a congregation where there's been adultery and that pastor is asked to leave and then the next one comes and you see the exact same thing and then that one goes and then the next one comes and what do you see? The exact same thing. And Who of you know what I'm speaking about? Who of you can even relate it to reality 
in congregations. Marty? Rasi? We've all seen it. That is why it says that do not be hasty in the laying of, of hands. However, we should be laying on of hands. Amen? And I want to encourage you to lay hands. But make sure that your life is right before God. And you're pure before God. And your motives are right. And there's no known sin. Okay? And then it says there, and do not share in the sin of others. So if I know that you are living in sin, okay, and you are unrepentant, there's a difference. If someone comes to you and repents and says, I'm wrong, I, I, for God forgive me, I want to get set free from this, will I lay hands on that person and pray for them? Of course. Of course. Why? Because it's, there's a confession. They've come before you as a leader, as an elder, or as a brother in Christ, and confessed that there may become times of refreshing and healing in their lives in this regard. So I very much believe, believe in that, and I think it's important, and we should do that. But if there is known unrepentant sin, do not dare lay hands on them. Carries on and says, they keep yourself pure. Because why? Maybe, maybe what's in them will come on you. You didn't think of that, did you? Sorry? You choose to, but don't, in other words, if you know someone's in known sin, do not open yourself to their sin. I will pray for you. I will serve you. I will not lay hands on you unless you repent though. Everyone happy? Lord Jesus, we bless you. We thank you for your goodness and kindness to us. Lord, we thank you for the laying on of hands. May we not shy back from this. I pray that we would be more than willing to lay our hands, even without gloves, on people out there, Lord Jesus, and even brothers and sisters on Christ. I pray that we would make sure that we have no sin in our lives and we would not condone known sin in other people's lives that are brothers and sisters. And Lord, I pray that you'd give us wisdom, that we'd hear from you at every point in our lives, and that we would be a, a church that easily lays hands on people but are wise and are not just willy-nilly going to lay hands on people, but that we're going to be discerning. And I pray, Lord, that you would grow this church. I pray that you'd grow, grow our leadership. I pray that you would grow us in our most holy faith and that we would have this doctrine clear in our understanding. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.